What's up, my comic comrades? Have you ever wondered to yourself which superhero would be the worst to see turn evil? I'm talking about those heroes where if they turned evil, it would be really bad for everyone. We definitely have, and we're gonna go through some of them. I will say, though, we have seen examples of some of these characters on our list going bad already. But the list wouldn't be complete without them. So without further ado, let's talk about 10 superheroes we hope never go to the dark side. First on our list is Sentry. Now, for those of you who aren't the most familiar with him, Sentry is one of the most powerful superheroes in all of comics. He is so powerful, in fact, that it's often debated whether Sentry could actually defeat Superman. The answer to that question is don't be ridiculous. Of course, Superman would win. But regardless, Sentry is still incredibly powerful. Dude has the power of one million exploding suns. And with this power, he has defeated the Hulk, destroyed Asgard all by himself, ripped Ares, the god of war, in half with his bare hands. And because of his connection with Void, he's basically immortal. Dude can even bring people back from the dead like he once did with his wife. Not only that, but you know Molecule Band, the guy who is the master of all molecules, meaning he could basically control and manipulate anything? Sentry defeated him, ordering him to put everything back the way it was, which ended with Molecule Man screaming in pain, saying, how are you doing this? I control the molecules. I do. But Sentry just stares, saying, put everything back. So needless to say, a superhero is essentially on par with that of Superman, but also having the ability to bring people back to life. And for all intents and purposes, is immortal due to the void living inside of him makes him one of the worst case scenarios if he went back. Next up, we have the Green Lanterns of Earth, or Sector 2814. Originally, there was only one Green Lantern of Earth, the OG, Alan Scott. But after continuity changes and a reboot of the character, the primary Green Lantern of Earth became Hal Jordan. But the Green Lantern Corps also added to the roster, giving us Guy Gardner, Jon Stewart, Kyle Rayner, Simon Baz, and Jessica Cruz, to name a few. So all these space cops with the power to wield whatever they want into existence via their Green Lantern rings would be really bad for the Earth if they went bad. We kind of already saw this when just Hal Jordan went bad, being possessed by Parallax, which led him to destroying all of Coast City. Imagine having like five evil Green Lanterns. They would take over the world. Having that much willpower be aimed for evil would be a nightmare for any good guy out there. Here we have the Jade Giant himself, the Incredible Hulk. As we all know, the Hulk is the strongest there is, as he likes to proclaim so much. And we've seen the Hulk go AWOL several times in the comics. Heck, that's the reason why the Avengers formed in the first place, to stop him from going crazy due to Loki's manipulation. And let's not forget World War Hulk, where he became so strong he broke the world with a single step. I repeat, his single step tore apart Manhattan and nearly sunk the East Coast. We also have the time in the Incredible Hulk issue 632, where just the summoning of his power destroyed half of the East Side of Las Vegas. That's not him using his power, that's just summoning his power. And now you know why they call this Hulk World Breaker Hulk, because he was breaking the world. Also, Maestro Hulk anyone? The future Hulk who defeated everyone? What I'm saying is if a Hulk went full on evil and continued to just get more and more angry, he would single-handedly destroy the world out of his sheer strength and rage. Next up, we have Cyborg, a character that was way ahead of his time, in the sense that as technology progressed and continues to progress, Cyborg only becomes more powerful and more relevant. Us OG fans know him as a member of the Teen Titans, but as of 2011, he became a founding member of the Justice League with the New 52, which got translated into the DCEU for Snyder's Justice League. If you've seen the Snyder Cut, you've already seen Cyborg's father break down his powers and what he's capable of. Basically saying, in the world of ones and zeros, he is the absolute master. No firewall can stop him, no encryption can defy him. So Cyborg has complete access to anything and everything digital. And as we know, the world is literally run by digital networks. So we can get instant access to passwords, information, top secret files, and even nuclear codes. He single-handedly rules the digital space, meaning he alone could take over and shut down the entire world in a second if he wanted to by erasing top secret information, making money disappear, and setting off bombs all around the globe. If Cyborg went evil, he could bring the world to its knees in a matter of seconds. The fact that he would control the monetary system and nuclear bombs alone would make him the instant ruler of Earth. Next up is an obvious one, the Scarlet Witch. We've seen her go rogue before and do some crazy stuff, like getting rid of almost the entirety of the mutant race. She's able to do stuff like that because her power set allows her to warp reality. So short and simple, if Scarlet Witch wanted to go 100% evil, she could change anything and everything around her in a single thought. She could wish entire worlds in and out of existence and change life itself to her will. There's almost nothing she couldn't do with her reality warping powers. There's not really much more to say. It's as simple as she has the power to change all reality, so if she went bad, 
That sucks for us. Role-playing board games and community gaming has never been more popular. And earlier this month, we introduced all of you to this dope Dungeons and Dragons style game set in the world of Middle Earth called The One Ring. It's fresh off a crazy popular Kickstarter for the game's second edition. And if you're a fan of the Lord of the Rings or fantasy in general, this game is a must have. The core game lets you explore Middle Earth in the third age, 20 years after Bilbo Baggins set out on his journey to the Lonely Mountains, but before the events of the Lord of the Rings. The game starter set includes a starter rule book, which lets you play as Bilbo and other hobbits as you set out on adventures. Along with all the information you need to navigate through the world like this big full color map of the Shire and Eriador. But if you want to go all in, you'll want to add the One Ring Core Rules volume, which gives you over 200 pages of even greater detail of Middle Earth, as well as rules for traveling across the land, fighting enemies, a complete landmark adventure, and detailed advice for the lore master. I can tell you that we take the go big or go home approach, so we recommend grabbing the One Ring bundle. Either way, you can pick up the game now at freeleaguepublishing.com or at your local hobby store. Just click our link in the description and use our discount code Varian at checkout to get 20% off any and all the One Ring items. That discount is valid for one purchase per customer and expires on September 30th. There's only a couple of days left to grab the One Ring game bundle with a discount, so jump on it. The next dude you would never want to see turn evil is the Silver Surfer because he's a herald of Galactus, meaning he possesses the power cosmic which grants him all sorts of crazy abilities, such as invulnerability, regeneration, super strength, phasing, stamina, energy absorption, blast power, energy manipulation, matter control, super speed, flight, time manipulation, healing abilities, telepathy, telekinesis, power alteration, power upgrade, and the list goes on. He's one of the most OP characters in all of the Marvel Universe, and it's for this reason that he's on this list. Due has unimaginable power and could single-handedly take over the Earth in an instant if he wanted to. There's actually only a handful of heroes that are a match for him and would be able to fight him if he ever decided to go rogue. Here we have someone you knew had to be here somewhere, and that of course is the Man of Steel. We've seen Superman go bad in Elseworld continuity several times over the years in comics, most notably in the Injustice video games and comics. And in each instance, it's full-blown worst case scenario for every other hero and human on Earth. Superman is widely known as the most powerful superhero in comics, and when he goes bad, even Batman's like, damn it. For instance, in the Injustice game and comic book series, Superman defeated Shazam, who was comparable in strength. He did this by sealing his mouth shut with his frost breath so he could couldn't say Shazam, and then proceeded to use his heat vision to melt holes in his eyes and brain. So yeah, Superman has easily defeated Shazam, who stood toe-to-toe -to -toe with him in terms of strength several times in the past. There's pretty much nothing Superman can't do. He's probably the strongest superhero in all of comic books. He's got heat vision, frost breath, x-ray vision. He's one of the top five fastest characters in all of comics. This dude could enslave Earth and pretty much any other planet. Coming in at number three is the fastest man alive, The Flash. Being the fastest man alive means not many people can catch him. There's a handful of people who would be able to even trail behind him, Superman being one of them. If Flash went bad, he could kill everyone on the planet in probably under a minute. Dude travels faster than light speed, even able to time travel when entering the speed force and can alter reality by messing with the timelines, which is another reason why it would suck if he went evil. He could just screw up timelines and cause all sorts of irreversible damage to heroes by playing with reality. We actually saw a glimpse of the damage he could do in the deceased storyline. In it, he got infected with a corrupted version of the anti-life equation. And once infected, he started running all around Earth, infecting thousands of people within seconds. So yeah, the Flash going evil would be devastating as you literally wouldn't see him coming, or he could just alter the timeline and screw things up that way, which no one would be able to stop either. Next up is the King of Atlantis, Aquaman. Essentially, he's the end-all be-all when it comes to sea and ocean life on Earth. And it's a good thing he's a hero and a founding member of the Justice League, because if he was a bad guy, all surface dwellers would be enslaved by the Atlanteans, as they're infinitely stronger than us humans, especially Aquaman. His bulletproof skin and immense strength are just the beginning of what would be very bad for us if he went evil. His true power comes from the fact that he controls the oceans of the world. You see, the fact that around 70% of the Earth is water means he could just threaten to sink our cities and countries if we don't do his bidding, which is something we saw Aquaman's brother King Orm threaten to do in the Throne of Atlantis storyline. Again, since the world is mostly water and that's what Aquaman controls, humans and most heroes do not stand a chance against him. At number one is a character underrated by a lot of people, and that would be Swamp Thing, Avatar of the Green. Or as I like to call him, Father Nature. He is literally connected to and controls all plant life on Earth, meaning the only way he can be killed is if you destroy every single last form of plant life on the face of the planet. And since he's connected to every form of plant life on the planet, he's everywhere all at the same time. Put it this way, you know how I just said previously that the reason why Aquaman going evil would be so dangerous is because he controls water, which makes up around 70% of the Earth? Well, around 80% of all living things on Earth is plant 
plant life, which is what Swamp Thing controls, meaning there's roughly 7,500 plants for every one human being. And Swamp Thing controls all of them. If he wanted to, he could open the earth up and swallow all human and animal kind and just start the world over from scratch. Layman's terms, we're living on his property, so if he wants to kick us out, he can easily. But besides just plant life on Earth, as Avatar of the Green, Swamp Thing has control over all plant life in the universe. So this dude can take over any planet that has plant life, which makes him incredibly dangerous if he ever went bad. I didn't even touch on Swamp Thing's other powers, but you could find out just how powerful Swamp Thing is by watching our How Powerful Swamp Thing episode right here. But that's just our list. There's tons of superheroes throughout comics history that could be a major threat if they went evil. Let us know what your list is in the comments. And that's going to bring today's episode to a close, but if you enjoyed this episode, check out this one right here. And if if you like all of our content, like, subscribe, and comment. It helps us out. But other than that, I'll see you next time when I talk about all things comics.